uh, as it comes to veggies. I'm pretty simple here when it comes to my chilies. Just some simple, sorry, simple uh, celery heart, one red onion if it's large, two if it's small, and then one green pepper. And I will show you the size here just in a minute. I did want to specify when you're doing the onions. Um, so this particular onion, there, now it's whole ish. So you cut off the base as close to the base as you can, and then cut off the top again as close as the top as you can, and then put one side down because you're not working with it, and all the juice uh, is what causes usually the tears. And uh, you put that down so you're not dealing with it as much. Then you come by here and you peel off this layer, uh, the first layer that brings you down to an actual manageable layer that you would actually want to eat. There. Now, when it comes to slicing an onion, how I've been taught in culinary school is you always start from the front, never from the back. And in fact, they always told us to leave part of that root on. But you start off by slicing this direction. So you're going down through there, cutting cuts like that. And usually when your board is down like this, so here, I'm doing this all one handed, it's kind of difficult. But you're literally cutting cuts like that about every half inch to an inch. And then you're coming back around and making cuts here along about a half an inch or so. And then finally, you're making cuts here at the same distance that you made the second cut. And by the time you get to the end, you should have a mostly diced up tomato or diced up onion. I will be back once I've got the uh, onion sliced up. All right, so once you've chopped up most of your onion, you'll get to the point where you really can't be able to chop up too much more. You come through and you recut it pretty much the same way you did, not through the that way first, but these ways first. So that, oops, sorry. Not through this way first, but these, these cuts. And then come back through, trying this one-handed here, Come back through and cut down as close to that root ball as you're willing to get. I'll, um, more than willing to chop this part up a little bit by hand because not all of it uh, gets chopped up regularly. And then always clean off your knife once you're done. And then you can use every little last bit of the onion if you so desire. There. Get really close to that root ball and it starts tasting pretty bad. So there, that's about as close as you want to get to it. We're not leaving too much, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, we'll be making red chili, or just traditional beef chili as it's usually known. Uh, we're going to be starting off today with uh, our diced up onions. And we're going to be cooking that in trio in a little bit of olive oil, uh, just to get it going. And... We're going to be starting to cook that on high. While this is cooking, you can always put a cover over it just to uh, speed up the uh, sautéing process. But while this is cooking, uh, we are going to chop up our celery. I chop it up in as small bits as I possibly can. It just makes it easier for us all to chew. And I think in the world, um, it tastes better. Anyways, so I am filming this all by myself, as I'm sure you can tell by the shaky cam. So... I am going to be back when this is all chopped up. All right, so once the onions are getting slightly translucent, turn the heat back down to about medium high. Again, keeping the cover off because otherwise you'd technically be sweating the onions and all we want to do really is saute them to get the flavor to come out. All right, now that most of the translucence has become more of an opaqueness, uh, we want to turn it almost all the way down to low. Just kind of let it sit there and do its thing for a while longer. All right, now we turn the heat off and turn our attention to the rest of the veg. We'll take this off the heat and next up, either more veg or some to cook the meat. 
Don't worry about all this extra stuff in the bottom when we put the meat in. This will all be gone and we can add our seasonings and I would say just add a little bit of pan spray in there uh, just to keep the meat from sticking. Alright, so meat is in the pan. Try to squish it down there as much as you can. The next step is seasonings because why would you want to brown meat if it has no seasonings? It just might be bland meat. So let's season it. Seasonings tonight are <clears throat> cumin, a good sprinkle of that all around. All the numbers will be in the description. Sorry that you weren't able to see. Next up, basil. Got a lot of that in there. Oregano. A bit more basil. Now I do a mix of chamayo and ancho chilies. I don't do chili powder. It's just my personal preference. I don't think it has the same flavor. And as far as chamayo goes, I try not to add too much, but still more than ancho. Chamayo is more of a, uh, that's what it is, roasted jalapenos that have been smoked. Uh, ancho is a, another type of chili that is, I believe also smoked and it has a more pronounced flavor. This is the particular type that we like. If you go for traditional chili powder, I'd say add a little bit more than what we just did. Your personal preference is always uh, the way to go. All right, let's get this mixed around and then we'll start it up. Oops, silly me, forgot one of the most important parts, the trio. As I'm sure you've seen by my videos now, that trio is in one of my very first videos, actually my first video I ever released, how to make it, is in that video. Alright, so use some gloved hands and mix your meat around in there a little bit. And we're going to turn it up to high. And what we want to do is get a nice even browning all around. Uh, don't worry about juices, we'll save that. And once we get it browned, we're going to transfer all of this to our crock pot. That's lined with the crock pot liner, obviously. And then we'll be adding our vegetables. But while this is cooking, let's chop up our veg. Check on our meat. I hear it bubbling. And sure enough, it is. I'm going to turn it down to about half. And we want to stir it up till we see no more pink. Keep cooking till you see no more pink. And don't worry about the juice. It's okay. It'll uh, season up the rest of our chili. Yeah, so it's fat, but that's quite all right. We don't need all of the fat. And if you have a high fat content, like a 80-20 or 70-30 meat that you're using, that means 80% meat, 20% fat, uh, that or higher, then I would say go ahead and strain it. Um, otherwise, if you're working at like an 85-15 or a 90-10, I don't think you need to strain it nearly as much. If you're really concerned about your fat content uh, and you're looking to cut every little calorie you can, then strain it, for sure. I don't want to tell you otherwise of what your doctor's already telling you. So, this is going to keep going because we still have pink. Obviously, pink is covered. While that meat is working, we're going to keep on our veg, and I've got the celery chopped up for the most part, but I'm going to keep going on it, and then on to the green pepper. Alright, so once you get down to the very center of the celery, you'll get these tiny little pieces and these little bit smaller pieces, and they always have the leaves on them. You don't want the leaves, but there's nothing wrong with these little white celery stalks. They actually contain the most mild celery leaves. So, celery flavor, sorry, words are hard, and because of that, they're the best for what I would consider to be a yummy celery. Strain your meat of the fat in a colander if you have meat that's a higher than 15% fat. At least we're finally on to our green pepper. So I've cut into the side of this green pepper pretty much as close as I'd like to get. However, I ended up getting some of the seeds. That's entirely, you know, a possibility. So, what we're wanting to do is get 
as much of the pepper as we can without getting any of the seeds. So, put it on its cut side down. It'll make it easier for when we try to go and cut at it. And try to get as much pepper without getting the seeds. Again, not the easiest thing in the world to do, especially one-handed, but there we go. And we started getting the seeds. Same thing on this side. And we started getting some seeds. We don't want to throw all of this away. That is a lot of useful pepper. So we cut off the bottom. Now, the ball itself, yeah, there is a lot of seeds up here. There is a little bit of useful pepper. It's up to you whether you choose to save that part or not. I would say save it. You don't want any of the seeds. The seeds are uber bitter, and you just don't want to have them part of your uh, dish. Makes it be a real, real bad thing. So, I'm going to trim these up, and then we're going to slice them up and dice them up, and we're going to put them in our veggies so that we can put it all in our chili. All right, all right, starting off here with our mise en place, as it's called, or everything in its place. We've got all of our ingredients that we need to finish up this chili. Our crock pot is lined with its liner. We've got our colander out, our meat, and our veggies all ready to go. And so it's time to take the beans, put them into the colander, and rinse them off until the water runs clear, and most importantly, until there's no more bubbles, or very little bubbles. This is a best way to help get rid of the majority of the gas that usually occurs with beans. So I'm gonna do that, and then I'll come back when that's all done. Okay, so, the beans are all rinsed off, uh, water is running clear, and just for the record, uh, we have navy, uh, pinto, black beans, and light red kidney beans this go around. So all of this can go into your crock pot, along with your meat, your vegetables, and then a couple of cans of tomatoes. And uh, this time around, I can't be able to show you guys how I open the tomato cans just because this is just me filming here. So all of this stuff is going to go into the crock pot and I will be back when it comes time for seasonings. Okay, so do a slight recipe edit here. Um, I believe I said three pounds of ground beef. We're taking that down to two pounds of ground beef. Um, just we're able to fit everything in the crock pot. Instead of two cans of tomatoes, we're just doing one. I'm doing the crushed, fire-roasted, organic tomatoes. Um, I would say a half a uh, heart of celery, uh, as opposed to one whole celery uh, heart. And then when it comes for the seasonings, oh, and I'd also omit the black beans as well. Don't worry, all of this changes will down will be down in the description, so that if you didn't get it here, it's down in the description. So no worries about that. All right, let's do seasonings here. Start off with trio. Yeah, we have uh, added that to the meat. However, there's no reason why we can't add it to the pot as well. We're going to add some iodized salt. Next up, some chives. Yeah, we have added the red onion, but there's nothing wrong with adding a little bit of greenery. Uh, next up is some marjoram. Don't need very much of this. Followed by cumin. Quite a lot of this stuff. The more the merrier. It eh, looks like I'm almost out. So I'm going to have to add some more uh, here off camera. Uh, then next up is oregano. Don't need as much of that. Followed by basil. Again. We don't need as much. Let's say the cumin. Next up is our spice. I do ch a blend of chameo and ancho chilies. Um, and so for the chameo, I do more of just because it's got less heat. Ancho, I do a little less of because it's got a greater heat. 
And then um, I do uh, grains of paradise or pepper. Uh, since mine is in a mill, I've got to do that one off camera. And then last but not least, I go for a little bit of applewood liquid smoke. Adds a nice smoky flavor to it, but doesn't add too much in the way of uh, overpowering smokiness. Now once this stuff, I'll stir all it up, once this stuff starts going, uh, then we can add in some beef broth and a little bit of veggie broth too. Um, I use bases, so I use a, uh, or, well, it doesn't need to be organic, but a better than bouillon uh, base. That's the veggie one, and then this is the beef one. Um, again, they don't need to be organic. It, it's nice, but it's not necessary. And uh, the main thing is about the uh, bases is that they have less salt than your traditional bouillon cubes do. Um, and they end up, uh, in my opinion, tasting better. And the whole reason for the veggie base is because uh, we're adding some more body to it. Uh, just because, you know, I think it tastes better. If you don't have the uh, veggie base, you can always omit it. But I think it tastes better with, so if you can, go for it. Remember, seasoning... Oops, sorry about the uh, fingerprint there. Uh, remember, seasonings uh, should always be in your budget. They literally cost cents. Alright, let's get this stuff going. I will be back when we've got a pot that actually is on and working. And, of course, we're putting it up to high on the crap pot. In fact, I think it's best to probably add the liquid now. It will help get it going here. So we're going to add in our beef and veggie um, stock here. And uh, we'll basically fill it up to uh, pretty much as much as we can throw into this crock pot. So uh, I will get that ready and we'll be back. Alright, so we've got our beef and veggie broth here. Uh, this is a little bit of a heavy amount of base compared to the amount of bra uh, water that we're doing but uh, we'll be adding a little bit more water later on here so it'll all match out just fine I'm gonna go ahead and scoop out this stuff off camera and stir it up and then we'll just put our cover on and let it go um, it's going on high so it's at least four hours here um, maybe even six I'm going to go with six, six hours. So, um, we'll be back when everything's mixed up uh, and we're six hours past. Okay, so it's been a little bit more than six hours, but that's okay. Um, so, what we're going to be doing now is adjusting the seasonings. Since I'm still filling this all by myself, I am going to stir it up. Good. Now, grab a tasting spoon. Try to get a little bit of everything or as close to it as you can. Do not taste over. So I'm going to pause it here while I do, while I taste. Oddly enough, I think we're spot on. So, if you follow the recipe in the description, you should be able to not have to adjust your seasonings at all. If you do, then I'd say, you know, if it's not hot enough, then add some more chili powder. And if it doesn't taste like it's got enough uh, beef to it, you can add more beef broth or base. And if it uh, just doesn't have enough seasonings, you can always add more seasonings. So. This is a perfect example of how to cut out the crap and have a nice, healthy, and filling meal. Sorry for the shaky cam. Uh, please rate, subscribe, comment, share, and uh, see you next video.